My name is Eve's Drop and uh, I'm from Cape Town, um, from a township called Parkwood. Um, it's a small township, um, but it has a lot of issues, um, a lot of poverty, um, just a lot of social ills, basically, a lot of crime, a lot of violence, a lot of disparity, um, but also a lot of creativity, um, a lot of humor, um, a lot of joyful people despite the circumstances that they face. Um, I have been actively involved as an artist, uh, MC in hip hop um, for about 20 years now. And a very big part of the time that I've spent as a creative has been also being an arts activist. Um, simply because I believe that the art is a weapon um, and should be taken really, really seriously because we as creatives um, have the capacity to help bring about change um, and to help disturb the peace in a sense. Um, and when I say disturb the peace, I mean the peace of silence, um, the peace of silencing people's voices, um, the peace which in my understanding equates to violence. That peace is the peace I'm talking about disturbing. Um, and I think that a lot of the societal issues that we face, especially as people coming from the ghettos, um, especially as the majority of people who are struggling, um, and especially people of color, I think that a lot of the reason for our struggle is based on the fact that we don't we don't allow ourselves the opportunity to be heard, right? Um, the institutions and the infrastructure that exists um, exists based on exists in a space basically that needs our silence in order for, for it to survive. Um, so I think m my perspective or where I come from um, is from the angle of, you know, disrupting that narrative. Um, it comes from the angle of dismantling that system, right? Um, because we're supposed to be living in a democracy right now, but the system of oppression is, I think, even stronger than it might have been at a time during which we lived through apartheid, for an example. Um, and I think the reason for that partly is also because when it comes to us as creative beings, right, we have, we have looked at or created the stigma or this idea that the arts is something of a luxury, right? And that the art is meant for certain segments of society. Um, and that if you are from a poor community, that you cannot have any kind of affiliation to the arts because that is for them. And them being the minority and them being the privileged and the rest being other. Um, and so I think what needs to happen is firstly a destruction, a complete destruction of the system and the idea of the arts as we know it, right? And we need to start looking at ways in which the education system on a foundation level can start incorporating arts into the main foundation curriculum. Um, in such a way that it is almost mandatory because what needs to happen is young people need to be allowed the platforms to bring in their voices into the basic curriculum that we have at the moment. And this is important because there needs to be representation, right? 
when we're talking about, for an example, bringing music into the arts, into the, into the education curriculum, we shouldn't just be looking at classical music. We shouldn't just be looking at, you know, a very specific um, genre or sound. We should be looking at the sound that is out there at the moment, the sound that young people identify with, the sound that they create, the sound that resonates with them. And so for me, I think we really need to be looking at bringing in these young voices because we're losing young people and we're, we're, we're losing them to crime and all kinds of statistics simply because we're not providing a space for them to see themselves. We're not providing a space for them to reflect who they are. We're not providing an alternative that is positive, uplifting, creative, stimulating, challenging in a healthy manner for young people. And so that is directly impacting the occurrence of violence. That is directly impacting the lack of interest in learning and sharing and building and uniting, you know? And that's the angle that I come from as an, as, an, as an artist, because I think that we're trapped in a spell almost of collective amnesia. And I think that we have forgotten a lot of the fundamentals um, that our forefathers, that our forebears, you know, carried throughout the ages. And I think we need to be looking at some sort of repatriation and some form of destruction in order to rebuild. And this is why some of my work incorporates looking at the importance of memory. For an example, I have a production, a theater production that I've written that is called Memory is a Weapon, right? And in this instance, the idea of memory is not just the memory of what it was like when you were a child or the memory of how things were 10 or 15 or 20 years ago or 30 years ago. It is the memory of a time beyond your physical frame or beyond your physical body. It is a time that your spirit can resonate with. It is a time that your ancestral lineage comes from. Um, and, and, and that for me is very important when we're looking at creativity when we're looking at, you know, creating, you know, the instances of peace um, through the arts. Um, you know, we need to be looking at spirituality. We need to be looking at African spirituality. We need to be looking at, you know, our lineage. We need to be looking at heritage. We need to be looking at, you know, our ancestral diversity and connectivity and similarity. Um, and those all form part of, you know, very important creative sort of disciplines. Um, and so the production that I'm working on, which is just as an example, um, is a theater play that incorporates some elements of hip hop, but also deals with the importance of looking at how we culturally identify, especially as people who are labeled colored, um, where I come from, um, you know, which is obviously an apartheid term um, and is a, is a term that basically means, you know, a, a nothing, the way I uh, interpret it or understand it. Um, you know, for me, that's, that's very, very important because we're, we're sitting with, you know, a lot of violence in, in our communities based on the fact that we've dissociated, you know, we've, we've, we've been so deeply fragmented that we don't hold on to anything in particular any longer. And that has caused us to disconnect from not only each other but also our uh, to a large extent our humanity and our ability to see ourselves in everything and everyone else right and that directly impacts 
our ability to use creativity as a weapon. Because, and so I've incorporated into this video a piece that I've recently created, a performance art piece called Teikari, which translates as the awakening or awakening. And it's called Kari, The Awakening, Cape Flats Kung Fu. Um, and basically it speaks about the impact of, of not connecting with our, our spiritual and ancestral heritage um, through not turning inward, through not paying homage, um, through not seeking um, for the gifts and the knowledge and the guidance that our ancestors are able to provide us. And the direct connection that that has, which in my understanding is praying and connecting to your ancestors is a creative discipline, basically a creative spiritual discipline. Um, but so the impact of not doing that directly um, results in the amount of violence that we've been experiencing and how it is destroying us as people. Um, my context is the Cape Flats because that's where I come from. Um, but the concepts are universal um, and I think anyone from any background um, who lives in the world today uh, would be able to identify with the message that I'm trying to drive um, even if just on a very basic level um, but so I have incorporated that video here um, because I I feel like the art needs to speak for itself the art is the message, the art is the entity, the art is the vehicle. Um, and so I hope that, you know, that speaks somewhat to my understanding of, you know, a very complex situation. Um, but I do believe that when it comes to the way in which we view the importance of the role that creativity and the arts plays um, for our people. I do believe that we need to look at infrastructure, we need to look at curriculum, and we need to look at, you know, representation. We need to look at, you know, taking away the, the sort of tiered or hierarchical um, approach that we've incorporated um, into our understanding of the arts um, and who should be able to access it and, um, you know, what that should look like and, and you know, um, what that could mean. Um, I think we shortchange ourselves and we shortchange in particular the ability and understanding of young people and the role that they have to play um, if only we would give them a few more tools, a few more resources, um, and if only we would allow them to reflect and shine shine their experiences um, in a constructive manner, then I think we would be looking at tackling many, many more issues that are currently just going completely undetected um, as root causes for, you know, the state of violence and the state of disarray and confusion that exists um, within our communities um, on a small scale and on a large scale. So, um, you know, that's, that's my contribution in terms of my thoughts. Um, I could go on for a lot longer. Um, I could say so much more. Um, but like I said, I, I would like for the video work that I've incorporated here to further speak uh, for me. Amaku.
What you know about the Cape Flats isn't all true. For people living here, the Cape Flats is a war zone. Turf battles between feuding gangs means hundreds of lives are lost every year. Many of them bystanders, unable to escape the bullet. It conducts daily raids, searching the homes of known drug dealers and drug dens. While the unit has made hundreds of arrests, the city of Cape Town says there are nearly not enough officers. Now the army is being deployed to help curb the violence. Special operations like this haven't stopped gang violence on the Cape Flats. According to government statistics, the number of murders has increased. This weekend alone, 43 people were murdered, more than half of them by gunshot. People in these communities say there aren't enough police and they think the presence of the army will make things safer. Many people here accuse the police of being ineffective and corrupt. In 2016, a police officer in charge of disposing confiscated firearms was jailed for selling the guns worth half a million dollars to gangsters. This man who doesn't want to be identified and belongs to a gang in Lavender Hill says poor policing is common. They take the people here, yeah, they take the people, they go with them, they put plastic bags around their heads, they put in tear gas, then they close it. So you know most when tear gas is in something and in it in down there, uh, oxygen and what they do with you. A lot of that police is corrupt, man. They take money, you go, you, they, they catch you now, of that guy, they catch you now, what the fire am. Tomorrow you see that guy walking again. While they may be from different gangs and often find themselves on the streets at war, all the gang members we spoke to agree on one thing. Sending in the army would only bring a temporary peace and that violence would likely return to the Cape Flats as soon as it withdraws. My name is Phila Kuri. I'm Tashnika Mitchell. My name is Ethan Swartz. My name is Trevor Solomons. I am Zuva America. I'm Brennan John Hendricks. I am Tyson Schultz. I am Colin Mahogany. My name is Tyler Pillay. I am Donovan Kuri. I am Adrian Gulaya. Angelina from the best days of the I am Zigo Schultz. My name is Ashley. I'm Sharon Daniels.
The silent screams and night visions make me delirious. To get by, I've adopted an attitude to analyze the microscopic, read between the lines. We're limitless, sublime, our guardians divine, like the helix intertwined with the rhyming storyline. Reality stranger than fiction, my judgment holds conviction, like the rate at which they incarcerate young black misled and gifted. But you can't hold back the lifted. Off the page, we never rhyme for fortune and fame, just to praise the golden age of the temple burning sage. The saga continues. I hear the cage bird lamenting about the severed wing while I practice I Ching to deviate the bullet swing so you can levitate to the seventh heaven with the cherubim pendulum swing back into time. The present is my mind as I concentrate, subjected to carry this omniscient weight, observing fate and understanding what's at stake. So I inhale determination, we will overcome. Exhale reverberation, metronome, my drum. Memory is a weapon, you must remember where you come from. Where you come from. Take a rip. Take a rip. Take a rip. Take a rip.